Chairman now recognizes himself for five minutes for an opening statement. First off, I want to thank you all for being here. Both our local witnesses and my colleagues who made the trip both from D.C. and from their respective districts. This looks a little different than our normal hearing um, and our normal hearing room. But I'm excited we're in Midland, Texas for our first energy field hearing. I believe field hearings gives us a unique boots on the ground perspective on how the policies and rhetoric coming out of Washington, D.C. affect uh, and actually impact regulated parties and communities. We unfortunately have an administration that's taken a whole of government approach to wage war on American energy production. President Biden has repeatedly promised to phase the industry out of existence and has followed through by creating uncertainty and issuing regulations to make energy harder to produce, more expensive for consumers. The rush to green agenda has also compromised our energy security, making us more reliant on our adversaries for sources of energy. Two years ago, America was energy dominant for the first time since 1952. In 2019, we became the number one oil and gas producer in the world. This drove down the cost for consumers at home, benefited our allies abroad by providing supply as an alternative to Russia and to OPEC. Much of this success is owed to the innovation and entrepreneurial spirit of the Shell Revolution created by hydraulic fracturing and the production of both oil and natural gas, something this community knows better than most. Energy and Commerce Republicans have solutions to build off of the success of the Shell Revolution and get us back to energy dominance. We have a series of bills that aim to unleash innovation by creating regulatory certainty and encouraging long-term investment. This is in sharp contrast to the Biden administration and congressional Democrats who want to make oil and gas production impossible. For the United States, we produce oil and gas cleaner and safer than nearly anywhere in the world, and we need policies to reflect this reality instead of ones that undercut our success. We need to unleash more American energy. So I'm looking forward to the hearing. Looking forward to hearing the perspective of our witnesses today, the ones who really understand the impact that the industry has on communities like Midland. I'd also like to thank Chair Rogers for holding this hearing and my colleague, Congressman Pfluger, for hosting us here in his district. I'd like to yield the remaining of my time, balance of my time, to Mr. Pfluger for some opening remarks. This is, um, we Okay, is this on now? It's on. I'd like to, to thank the entire committee for making the trip here. Um, we obviously had a little bit of air travel difficulty.